Welcome back to another fly tying episode. Today I am going to tie up the Hornberg. This is the tandem streamer version of the classic fly you guys know and love. This streamer variation has been around almost as long as the original Hornberg pattern. Let's start the video off by sharing a picture of a nice main brown trout that was caught with the tandem Hornberg streamer. Uh, this photo was submitted by Craig Foucher. Craig said that he was trolling all day using live bait and had no luck. He switched to a tandem Hornberg and caught a mess of trout, including the one in this photo. So a big shout out to Craig. Thank you very much for allowing us to share the photograph here on New England Streamers. It's always nice to have a picture of a fish caught with the fly that I'm tying. All right, so let's get right into this pattern here. So I've got the rear hook in the vise. That's going to be a size 8 nymph wet hook. I'm starting some 210 UTC thread in white on the hook shank, and I'll be snipping off the tag end here to come in with a piece of monofilament. This is a 30-pound test piece of monofilament, pre-cut to about 3 inches. Pre-cut it as long as you want, depending on how long you want your fly to come out. So I've got this slid through the hook eye, and I'm just going to take a few turns forward. Make sure that your piece of monofilament stays straight if it starts. come in with some gold tinsel. I've got some large gold mylar tinsel here. I'm just going to tie this in up here at the hook eye. I'm going to wind this in as evenly as possible, touching turns down to the barb of the hook here. And then I'll reverse directions and start taking my thread back up towards the hook eye where I started. I'll come in and throw a couple half hitches in here so my thread doesn't come undone while I wrap forward. Grab a hold of the tinsel, take touching turns forward. And once I get up here to the hook eye, I'll just grab my thread, take a few turns over the top of the tinsel to secure it. Pull it back, take a few turns in front. And snip it off. Now I'm just going to even out this head a little bit, throw a couple half hitches in, and come in and snip the thread off here. Now I'm just going to start some black thread. Honestly, you could just snip the thread off and put some uh, head cement on and call it good. But traditionally, the head color would be black, so I'm just going to stick with that. Just applying enough thread here to color it black, and then I'll tie it off, a couple whip finishes or half hitches. I'm just going to come in with some super glue here and hit this head, and that will secure all these wraps here. Now I'll take the fly out of the vise and I'll put the front hook in. This is a size 6 nymph streamer hook, larger than the rear hook, and I'm winding on the same thread, some 210 UTC thread in white. Now I'm going to grab that rear hook I just built and I'm going to tie this in. So I'm just going to start my thread wraps here at the rear and uh, slowly work my way forward, making sure that the monofilament stays on top of the hook shank and does not spin. And also, you don't want to take your monofilament all the way to the hook eye. You guys can see that I've left a little bit of space here because this isn't uh, standard. Because this is a Hornberg and it's going to have that uh, webby collar at the front, you want to make sure you've got enough room for that. So now I'm going to come in with another piece of gold tinsel. I'm going to tie this in, gold side facing down. And once I get down here to about the barb of the hook, I'm just going to reverse directions again and take my thread back up to the hook eye. And 
And now I'm just going to grab a hold of the tinsel here and wrap forward just like before. Try to get nice, even, touching turns. Obviously, the smoother your body was wrapped, uh, the smoother this step is going to be. And I'm just going to stop right here, take a few turns to secure the material, and um, come in and snip this off here. And now what I'm going to do is just take some turns to level this head out. And I'll snip off the thread and come in with some black 70 denier UTC thread. And this smaller thread is what I'll use to finish this fly. So I'll break or snip off the tag end here and I'm going to come in with the next material. The next material is going to be some yellow bucktail. I'm going to snip off a small clump of this yellow bucktail and I'm going to thin it out. Pull out all the short fibers and all the stray fibers that are shooting off to the sides. <clears throat> Set this at the front of the hook. Take a few turns forward. And then I'll bring my thread back to where it started. I'll come in and snip these butt ends of hair off. And that is basically it for the underwing. So now it's time to construct the actual wing. And I'm going to use these two grizzly feathers. These are grizzly saddle hackles from a rooster. And the shoulder will be just a simple mallard flank. And they'll go together something like this. So I've got two grizzly saddle hackles and one mallard flank feather. I'm going to glue all three feathers together and you can either tie them in at the same time or one at a time. I'm going to tie in one side at a time here. Tie this in. Bring my thread back. And see that looks like it's setting pretty good. So I'll come in with the other side. Rangely style streamers are always tied in on the sides. Set this on. Try to take some touching wraps here, advancing the thread towards the hook eye. And you can stop and take a look and make sure everything's setting good. It looks good, so I'm going to take a few more wraps. I'm just going to get down as close as I can towards this hook eye. And then I will grab all of these stems and I'll bend them backwards like so. And I'll just pinch them, grab a hold of them. Can't seem to get a hold of this little guy here. He keeps popping out. But that's all right. I'll wrap these ones down and there we go. And just take enough turns to secure all the stems, come in with the scissors, and I'll snip off each stem individually. Now come back with the thread and just even this out, get all these chunks out. Um, don't go down into the hook eye yet. That's just going to add a bunch of extra bulk that you don't need and clog up the hook eye. What I'm focused on right now is just leveling out this section here so I can get the hackles in. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some jungle cock nails and place one on each side of the mallard flank. And that will act as like the eye of the fly. To me, the Hornberg is just one of those patterns that does not look right without the jungle cock. I'm sure it will catch just as many fish if you don't use jungle cock feathers, but this is just one pattern I like to reserve mine for. Come in with another jungle cock eye. Set that on the opposite side. Repeat the process. 
And now you can snip off the butt ends of these jungle cock feathers. Now I'm going to tie this in with just a single brown dry fly hackle feather, but let's talk about your options here. You can see that I've stripped some of the fibers away from one side of the feather just to help start the wrapping process. Traditionally, the Hornberg is tied similar to an Adams dry fly as far as the collar goes. So you would use one grizzly dry fly hackle and one brown dry fly hackle. And you would tie them both in together and you would wrap them together. Just like an Adams. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go look up the Adams dry fly and see how that's done. And I'm just going to wrap this forward as the collar, touching turns, wrapping that bare stem first, and now the hackle will follow. I just keep taking my fingers and pulling it back like so. I'm only using brown here. You can just use brown. You can just use grizzly. Uh, you can use one brown, one grizzly. You can use two brown, two grizzly. You can use dry fly hackle, or you can use a webbier hen hackle. Honestly, it's all up to you guys. And once you've got it how you want it, just come in with your thread and kind of zigzag through the material like so. If you go to 10 different fly shops, you will find the Hornberg tied up 10 different ways. So it's totally personal preference. I'm only using one brown feather because this one is super long from a grade A dry fly cape and I just think that uh, this is plenty of hackle for me so use your personal judgment there now I'm gonna come in and whip finish three turn whip finish and I'll come in and put another and then I'll come in and hit it with another three turn whip finish Snip away any errant fibers that you don't want there in front of the fly. And then come in with your head cement to finish the fly. And that is how you tie the Tandem Hornberg streamer. Now the original Hornberg is typically one third the size of this streamer. It's a classic pattern that's popularly fished by casting out as a dry fly. This streamer version is best trolled from a canoe or a boat in a lake or a pond. And the original Hornberg pattern was originated in the 1920s by Frank Hornberg of Portage County, Wisconsin. This fly continues to line anglers' fly boxes, including my own, after a century's worth of flies have come and gone. I know the original Hornberg was created in the 20s and that this tandem streamer version has been around at least since the 1950s. You guys can see that I favored the brown dry fly hackle in my version here today. Don't be afraid to try a, uh, you know, webbier hackle or, like I said, tying it in like an Adams with the grizzly and brown at the same time. I personally like to tie mine with the um, dry fly hackle because it's stiffer uh, and it creates more turbulence in the water. It's a great alternative fly to have in my fly box when the traditional featherwing streamers aren't working. I know I can throw them. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you'd like to support the channel, please hit the subscribe button. You can also consider becoming a member on my Patreon where you get early access to all my content, including bonus content that's only available to my patrons. Good luck out there, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.